In this video, I'll show you how to display product attributes in WooCommerce in just a few simple steps. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are on our demo site and I've already created a few attributes for this particular product and this one here. So here you can see we've got a color attribute and we've got a size attribute as well. And currently I'm on the shop archive page and I've just enabled the option so we can choose our selection from the shop archive page. Okay, so as you can see here, when we select a particular color, you can see that the image changes without having to select all the different um, variations. So I'll show you how you can do this and so much more. Um, later on in the video as well, I'll show you how to display a alternative shop page to display your product attributes depend on your shop setup. Okay, so to achieve all this, the first step is to head over to WooSuite.com and you want to go ahead and download the Variation Swatches plugin. So this plugin is free. There's also a pro version as well. And then optionally, you want to also download the WooCommerce product table plugin. So again, this plugin is optional. And later on in the video, I'll show you how you can set up your product page similar to this one here. And then you'll be able to display all the different product attributes in a different column. So based on your business setup, you might want to um, consider this particular layout. OK, so with that out of the way, let's head back over to our dashboard. Okay, so assuming you've downloaded the Variation Swatches plugin by WeSuite, you want to just go ahead and upload those plugins. So you navigate to Plugin, Add New, and then just go ahead and upload the file in which you've just downloaded. Once you've done so, you'll see this WeSuite menu here. Go ahead and activate your license key. Navigate to Add-ons. Okay, so I've already got this open in a different tab. And then we'll just install the relevant uh, plugin that we'll need. So for example, if you want to use the Product Table plugin, you'll just go ahead and um, toggle this to On. For the Variation Swatches plugin, similarly, you just go ahead and toggle this to on as well. If you've got the Variation Swatches Pro, then you just go ahead and activate this add-on here as well. Okay, so now with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and create our first um, product attribute, right? So we'll navigate to Products and then Attributes. Okay, so I'll just show you how I've set up my color attribute and also the size attribute as well. Personally, I prefer to create our attributes on a global level so we can reuse it on uh, multiple different products. There's numerous advantages to this as well. So for example, when you use our Variation Swatches plugin, you'll get access to the full set of feature if you create your attributes on a global level. So if you've already set up your attributes, then you can go ahead and skip this one. I'll timestamp everything, but in the event that you haven't created any attributes yet I'm just going to show you how to create it here okay so in my case I'm going to create one called a fabric since we've already created a color one here in your case if you wanted to create a color attribute you'll just add the name color here and then I'm just going to go ahead and click add attribute Okay, so here's our fabric attribute and currently we've got no terms assigned to it. So for example, with our color um, attribute, we've got these different terms here. So we've got blue, brown, cream, gray, green, red, and yellow. For our fabric attribute, I'm gonna click configure term and I'm gonna add um, probably wool and cotton, right? Those are two different fabrics that I wanna add onto our store. So I'll add um, wool first. Okay, then just press add fabric. And then it should display here once it's saved. Okay, and then I'll just add a cotton. Okay, so now that we've created our attributes, let's actually go ahead and assign those attributes to a particular product, to our variable product, to be more specific. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to products. Okay, so I'm going to edit this product here. Okay, and then I'm going to navigate to where it says attributes. And then from here, I'm going to... Okay, so let's scroll back down. Okay, and then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and select our fabric attribute. I'm gonna go ahead and click add, and this will allow us to assign a particular attribute to our product. Okay, and then here we'll just leave this enabled so this is visible on a product page. But what's more important is we need to ensure that we tick this option here where it says use for variation. So I'll just tick that option. And then we can select the different terms. So we've got cotton wool, which are created earlier. In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and click select all and then just save attributes. Okay, now that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and assign our fabric attribute to our variation. So I'll navigate to where it says variations. Okay, so since I've already created my attributes earlier, it's just appended this fabric attribute onto my existing variation. Okay, so here you've got a few options. So in your case, yours will be blank, but you've got a few options when you wanna go ahead and add your um, variation. So you can just click um, go here. 
okay and then here it's just added this um, option so we can manually build it out let's say for example your brown t-shirt only comes in a small so we'll select um, brown a small and then we'll select the fabric let's say it's the fabric in this case is cotton then this is a variation built out here and then you can just click go again and then just manually just build out your variations or you can go ahead and click create um, a variation from all attributes and then this will basically add as many different combinations as you can with the existing attributes which you've enabled here. So for example, for my color attribute, okay, so instead of using all the different colors, I've only selected brown and cream here. Okay, so if we were to click the option in this variation tab where it says create all variation from all attributes, then it will basically take the brown and cream term here. It'll take the sizes which we've enabled here. And it will also take this fabric attribute in which we've created here and then create all the different possible combinations that you can with these particular attributes. But as I said, if you wanted to just manually build it out yourself, you just go ahead and click go and then you'll just manually just add the different variations which you've got available. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete um, this option here. Okay, and then whilst we're here, let's go over a few things. So you can set a featured image for this particular variation. Okay, and not to confuse things, but if you also install our additional variation gallery plugin, then that will allow you to add multiple different images for each variation. By default, WooCommerce only allow you to add one featured image per variation. Okay, and then here you can set the price. You can set the regular price, the sale price if it's um, on sale. Okay, you can set the stock um, status as well and all these other informations down here. Okay, so you can just go through and then just configure um, each variation as needed. Let's say, for example, if all your variation was a set price, for example, so I've just clicked on this drop down here and then we'll just click set regular price and then we'll click go. And then here we'll access the enter in the price. So let's say, for example, if I select um, 50, $50, then it will set all the variation price to um, $50 or pounds in my case. OK, so if I click on this here, you can see all of them are now 50 pounds. OK, and then once you finish um, doing all your edits, you just go ahead and click um, save changes and then just update the product here. OK, and now when we view the product, we'll see these drop downs here for our different attributes. OK, so we can choose our color, size and then a the fabric and then just add it to cart. OK, and I should note as well that if we were to visit the shop page here, Okay, so I should mention that by default, WooCommerce doesn't allow customers to be able to select the different attributes from the shop page. Okay, but if you were to download the Variation Swatches plugin, you can do that. And I'll show you exactly how you can do this now. So first, I'll show you how you can improve the user experience of selecting the swatches here. Okay, so we'll navigate back to our dashboard and then we'll navigate to WooSuite and then Variation Swatches. I've already got it open in a different tab. We've got a few options, so we can enable the color swatch, image swatch. I think to better explain this, let's navigate over to WooSuite again, and this will explain it better. So we've got the option to automatically convert our variation featured image into a swatch here. So here we've got this backpack, and as you can see, instead of saying um, black, blue, or green, you can see the actual um, image of that particular variation. Okay, so that's one option. You've also got an option to just enable a color swatch, um, a label swatch. Um, you can add dual color as well. There's also an option to um, show a radius button and loads more. Okay, but that should give you an idea of the different look and feel you can have. So as I said, you've got the color swatch, image swatch. For this example, I'm just gonna convert all our drop downs into the label swatch. Okay, so I'll just enable this option here. And then from here, you just select the attribute in which you wanna um, convert into the label swatch. Okay, so we can select the color attribute and also the fabric attribute and then just save changes. So we've got loads more videos on the channel about how to actually go ahead and configure these options. Okay, so now let's refresh this page and everything should be converted into a label swatch. Okay, so this is a much more better user experience. So instead of messing around with the drop downs, okay, so for example, the size attribute, the user won't know which um, options are available until they actually go ahead and click the drop down. So this is a way much better um, user experience. And as you can see, we can just go ahead and quickly um, select the different options here. So now I just want to show you how you can enable these swatches on the shop options. 
archive page. Okay, so again, by default, it looks like this. And to enable the swatches on the shop page, it's super simple. We'll just head back over to our variation swatches settings here. And then we'll scroll down to where it says archive slash shop page. And then all we have to do is just enable this option here where it says show swatches label. Okay, so all these options here is specifically for the shop archive page. Okay, and if you've got the pro version as well, you can enable this um, single swatch attribute. Okay, so when you enable this one, um, you can choose the main. Okay, so before I enable this option, let's just show you exactly how it is. So let's just hit save changes. Okay, and now when we refresh this page, Okay, here we can see um, our swatches on the shop archive page. So if a user sees something they like, they can just quickly add it um, to their basket right from the shop archive page. But to take it a step further, what I personally recommend is that when we head back over to here, I recommend enabling this option where it says show single attribute on the shop um, archive page. And then here you can choose which um, attribute to show. So for example, we can select um, color, fabric, um, fit or size. I'll just leave this a color. And then additionally, you've got an extra option here to allow users to change the image of the particular variation by either clicking on it or hovering over it. So let's select um, hovering over it and then let's save changes. And now when we refresh this page, we should only be able to see this color attribute here. Okay, so currently we can see our color attribute only instead of seeing the color, um, size and fabric. This makes more sense to just show um, the color attribute and we can quickly see what each variation would look like. So this makes a much better user experience for the user. Okay, so for example, if they wanted to see what the cream um, shirt would look like, instead of clicking over to the product page and then actually clicking on the cream option, they can just quickly hover over it and they can quickly see what the cream version would look like. Okay, so this is how we display our product attributes in WooCommerce. Okay, so now as I mentioned, there's a second method in which we can use and this actually involves using our product table plugin. So let's head back over to our dashboard and then we'll navigate to WooSuite and this time we'll navigate to um, a product table. Okay, and then the first step is just to create a new table. Just click add new. Okay, so we just give this a name. You can name it whatever you want. It's just for internal purposes. So we can say um, main shop page. Okay, and then we'll just navigate down to where it says order form information. And then here we just want to drag and drop um, a few different columns. Okay, so just so this makes sense, let's navigate over to um, the product table page. So here you'll have a better idea of what we're actually doing. So I'm going to create a similar setup to this one where you can see different columns, right? So you can see um, all the product image here, all the product name here, categories, product size, and so on. So this is what I'm currently setting up. Okay, so first I'm going to drag and drop our um, product image. Um, product name, um, a short description, and the price, of course. And we'll also add a um, custom attribute. So we'll just click custom data here. And then we'll click this pencil icon. And then for the data source, we'll select custom taxonomies. And then we'll select our color attribute. And then just click update. Let's X this off. And then I'll go ahead and add another column for our custom data. And then this time, so I'll select a custom taxonomy again. And then this time I'll select um, size, product size. Let's click update and then we'll X this off. And then this time we'll just add a add to cart button here. And I think that's it for now. So we'll just leave everything as default. And then we'll just go ahead and select where it says order form control. We'll enable product filtering and we'll set it to custom. And then for this one, I'm gonna type categories. So if you click this link here, this read more link, you'll see a list of all the different filters in which you can use. So I'm using categories to allow customers to filter by categories, tags, attributes, and let's remove this sale. If we add that sale text there, then it would allow users to filter products by um, items on sale. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit um, save changes. Okay, and then now I'm just gonna head back to the main settings area and we'll go ahead and select this product table as our main shop page. So it says shop pages here. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this product table in which we just created and set this on as our main shop page. You can do the same for the product category, which makes sense, and a product tag as well. So you just go ahead and select um, the product table in which you just created. Okay, so now let's hit save changes. 
And now when we visit our shop page, it will now have this product table design. Okay, so we can quickly filter by categories. We can filter by a particular color, fabric and so on. Okay, so whilst we're here, let's go ahead and actually add a reset link here just to improve the user experience. So let's navigate back to product table and then I'm gonna edit this product table in which we just created. So I'll just click edit here. Okay, and then we'll navigate down to order form control and then we'll just enable this option here which says reset button. Okay, so let's just save changes. And now when we refresh this page, we should have a reset um, option. So now when we make our selection, we can just quickly reset it. And I've just noticed that our um, custom columns are not showing. So let's head back over to our product table and just double check that the settings actually saved. And then here we can see um, the product color. Okay, so we can see the different um, options which are available. And then one last thing as well, which I think is worth mentioning. So here um, for our variable product, it's actually got a select option button here. So instead of displaying that, let's, so we're editing the same product table which you created earlier. So now let's navigate to bulk add to cart and then we'll enable the Ajax add to cart behavior. We'll enable the quantity picker as well. And then for the variation settings, instead of linking it to the product page, let's actually show it as a drop down list. Okay, and then just let's hit save changes. And now let's refresh this page. Okay, and now here we've got the option to actually go ahead and select the variation in which we want to purchase. So for example, we can say brown, um, large, um, let's say cotton, and then we can just add this to cart. This makes for a much more user-friendly experience and depending on which sector you're in, you might want to switch your default shop page to this product table layout. Finding products is super fast. If we wanted um, a top, for example, you can instantly find it. We can reset this option. We can reorder it by price. As you can see, everything's done instantly. Same with the name. We could add a SKU code as well. So users can search via SKU code and so much more. And that's the display product attributes in WooCommerce in just a few simple steps. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave in the comment box below or reach out to support and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.